So we're going to start with the, the next presentation. My name is Andreas Ferber. And uh, following up to Andrew's talk about um, the uh, um, software user space side of 64-bit uh, ARM, I'm going to talk a bit about the hardware side of um, ARM boards, in particular focusing on the kernel for both 32-bit and 64-bit. I'm speaking a bit slowly so that those that are interested in attending the talk can still come in. Hello, we're talking with, we're starting with a talk. Okay. So, um, OpenSUSE Factory is uh, being built in a sub-project, OpenSUSE Factory ARM. We have three architectures available for this, um, ARM v6L, ARM v7L, and ARG64. Um, we have OpenQA running for ARG64, unfortunately not for, for the other ones at this point in time, and um, we have that working for um, KVM only, so that means that any bits that are specific to a particular board as far as booting goes um, might occasionally work or not work. Um, in particular, the Raspberry Pi users have experienced that in the last year, unfortunately. There has been a lot of progress on various fronts for enabling ARM hardware for um, OpenSUSE. Um, there is a lot more boards that we can squeeze into this half hour, so um, for one, um, if I don't mention a board here, it probably means that it was working before and there is not much change to um, report on. Or if you think that I uh, missed something that's new or worth mentioning, then um, please raise it at the end of the talk. I'm also going to mention some new ones, even if Andrew has already mentioned some for 64-bit for um, before. So let's start with um, ARM v6, that's the uh, um, ARM 11 processor in this case. Um, with a Broadcom BCM2835 SOC. I'm not going to read all the details. So the main changes here are that uh, we have managed to get the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi Dash firmware package um, accepted, cleaned up into... Um, I'm seeing different slides here, so let me check. Okay, so that's what I was talking about for you to read. Sorry about that. Um, we have the Raspberry Pi firmware package accepted into Tumbleweed. We also have um, slightly just um, um, rearranged the, the configs into a new sub-project just this week. Um, there is a UEFI enablement for the Hubert-RPI package. The kernel default is booting um, very well with uh, whatever is um, um, available driver-wise in the mainline kernel. And there is a, a Juice Raspberry Pi since um, this last year building in factory and no longer as a contra project. Um, there should also be MISA acceleration, 3D acceleration for the VC4 available. I haven't been able to personally test it for this talk, so if anyone has played with that, please um, um, speak up later on. Let's see. Okay, so this is working now. Um, there's not much to say about the BeagleBone, except that um, there has been a change in the mainline Linux kernel, switching it from TTYO for the serial console to TTYS. Um, if you're downloading a new image, then you should notice about that. If you've been updating the kernel um, on your new image or planning to, then this is a change that you may need to make in the um, boot script. Moving on to the Raspberry Pi 2. So um, it is possible to use the kernel default 4.6 from a Tumbleweed to boot into the device, unfortunately not kernel LPIE, um, but there are some drivers still missing or not working there, so for now um, you still need to use the uh, contrib. For the Jetson TK1 board, um, we also have a UEFI enablement available. Um, in the U-boot package, which needs to be flashed separately on the board. Um, the uh, Tumbleweed kernel finally is working, also with networking now. 
Um, but what we're still lacking is a 32-bit juice image um, with the LPAE kernel that also includes the um, DTB when we have it right now. So currently that is only available for a 64-bit. The uh, Firefly RK3288 board is running the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed kernel by now. Um, there are still some issues with uh, the Hubert bootloader. So uh, since uh, we did the UEFI enablement, it was uh, not working, so uh, I've needed to manually disable that. Um, but apart from that, things are working quite fine there. The Odroid C1 has been making some progress um, on uh, um, getting mainline as far as the kernel goes. Um, unfortunately, so the um, um, MMC drivers should have gone into the Linux Next kernel um, like, um, like a couple of weeks ago, um, but we don't have a, a juice image that includes those yet. Then um, there's been a new um, guitar board or module with a board. Um, unfortunately, nothing is uh, mainline from that, so uh, I've not managed to um, get that running OpenSUSE um, easily yet. In particular, no, um, no ready-made juice image. Um, again, if anyone else has uh, been able to get something working on there, please um, bring it up later. Then uh, Marvell has publicly announced that it will be working with uh, Zeus and OpenZeus and enabling its board. And the first um, board that we've been working on has been the ClearFog from SolidRun. Um, we have a, a Hubert package for that available. Um, unfortunately, um, Hubert is still lacking the, um, the, the particular boot scripts to allow um, our kernel to um, boot immediately. So there's some... Um, configuration variables that one needs to, to set manually. Um, it is possible to boot into the, the Grub2 um, bootloader, and uh, um, unfortunately, since we're unable to have a GPT partition table for, um, for this particular chipset, um, our um, Grub package currently does not have the modules available for um, actually accessing the um, FAT partitions, sorry, the, the MBR partitions. Um, but the kernel is fully mainline, including the um, DTS. We've also had the chance to play with an early version of the Tourist Omnia, which you can see on your right-hand side over there. Um, it is uh, running a very similar SOC. Um, the U-boot uh, is uh, not yet in mainline. The kernel um, similarly um, should work, except that the DTS file is uh, not yet there. Then there's a new board that uh, we've just received with a MediaCheck chipset. Um, it appears that the kernel support for that is there, um, but um, the DTS file is still missing, and it looked as if the U-boot was, uh, was not mainline, but uh, I couldn't fully um, test that out yet. Moving on to the 64-bit ARMv8 boards, there's the uh, Raspberry Pi 3, which was already shown earlier on. Um, since this week, two days ago, we have a, a Raspberry Pi firmware package, also with a prepared config.txt file that um, has the enablement for 64-bit kernels. Um, there is a 64-bit U-boot RP3 package available. Um, I tried testing uh, one of the Linux Next kernels. Um, that was not yet um, booting, but we do have a Juice Raspberry Pi 3 ARG64 image available as a contrib, and that one is using a 42.2 kernel and was working very well. There's the high keyboard, personally, I can't say too much about that. So um, the um, um, ARM trusted firmware should be available in uh, mainline. U-boot is available in mainline. There's also, um, it is shipping with a Tiana core on there, so UEFI. Um, the kernel is mainline. We do have a juice image available, but I didn't manage to um, test that in time for this talk. So um, if anyone can give us a status update um, after the talk, that would be appreciated. Then there's the Dragon Board, also shown by Andrew. 
Um, there is uh, an issue with building an uh, SD card because they are still using the, um, well, they're, they're using a couple of Qualcomm specific bootloaders as well as the Android LK bootloader, and it is necessary to actually patch the bootloader um, to make it boot from SD card via, via, um, instead of the uh, internal eMMC. And uh, um, there is if we take the existing one on the eMMC, then we can take a train-loaded U-boot, and with that, um, not get into UEFI yet, but it's possible to build, uh, to, to use at least mainline kernels. Um, unfortunately, the kernel LPIE was uh, not yet booting when I last tested it. There's also a new 96 board that Andrew did not show in his talk, I believe, that's with an Actions um, S90 SOC. Uh, we did not yet get access to that. Um, again, if anyone knows anything more about that, apart from that, quite obviously the kernel is uh, not yet mainline, then um, please uh, let us know after the talk. There are um, both the uh, Lemaker Cello 96 board and the announced today um, Soft Iron Overdrive 1000 board, um, which are based on an AMD processor. Um, the kernel should be all mainline, and the existing EFI juice image should just work. And as we heard today, the OverDrive 1000 even ships with a Leap pre-installed, which is a pretty cool thing. Thank you very much. Then there is um, also in the 96 boards form factor, the Andromeda Box Edge from Marvell. Um, it appeared as if there were no U-boot sources available, which uh, I found quite disturbing since that is a GPL project. Um, the kernel for that did not seem to be mainline yet, and unfortunately the one board that uh, we had available, actually we managed to, to brick apparently while soldering on JTAG connector. So if anyone has had more success than we do, then um, please let us know. We've played a little with the uh, Jetson TX1 board with a 64-bit uh, NVIDIA SOC. Um, we have a U-boot um, package available. It's got some weird uh, P and a four-letter name uh, code, the only one of that. Um, the kernel was still in the process of being mainlined, and Linux Next was not fully working the last time we tested it, but that's um, uh, already a couple weeks back. Um, Similarly, there's the um, Odroid C2 board that has come out with a 64-bit M-Logic processor. Um, there has been, um, since the last U-Boot release, a mainlining of um, a um, U-Boot bootloader, but um, the um, mainlining of the kernel is still in uh, quite early stages. At uh, Forstem, I showed the uh, Geekbox board with a Rockchip 64-bit um, SOC. Um, by now, the ARM trusted firmware for that one is uh, mainline. Um, U-boot, unfortunately, is not yet mainline, which makes it a little hard to, to boot OpenSUSE kernels, but um, it is possible to boot at least um, the mainline Linux Next kernel, and it should probably be possible to build the kernel head um, and to, to, to make the kernel head work on that one. For the Pine 64, um, mainlining is still in progress. Um, there is a juice image available as a contrib, but unfortunately at this time it um, got stuck during boot. It supposedly worked at one point, and there is one with a downstream kernel um, that should work a little better, but not yet with the mainline kernel. And then one board that we just received with a Samsung 64-bit processor. Um, it appears that the software for that one is uh, not yet mainline either. And uh, we've not been really able to prepare anything for that yet since it's just out. And just announced is a new board from, uh, um, from Marvell. Um, it appears that the kernel uh, definitely was already in, uh, in progress from mainlining. U-boot uh, not yet to my knowledge, and obviously the board is not yet physically available. So, for, uh, 
for you guys as uh, Tumbleweed users, whenever I was mentioning on my slides that something is not mainline, that means that you will not find support for that board in the official Tumbleweed um, distribution and images. Um, in particular, I always remind people that Tumbleweed is not just a set of, uh, of user space packages. Um, it also includes the kernel. And one difficulty that arises in particular when using some uh, old um, Android kernels uh, by vendors on, on certain boards, then um, packages like Tumbleweed, uh, sorry, that packages like systemd might actually run into trouble with um, ioctals or um, syscalls not um, implemented in the particular kernel. Um, if you have such a case, then you can use the um, juice rootfs, which is just the user space parts. Um, and um, in some cases, people have created sub-projects under Debel Arm Factory Contrib, um, where um, a separate kernel dash source package with a um, particular kernel flavor um, is uh, packaged that can be combined with the regular Tumbleweed user space or possibly with additional um, firmware or um, other versions of user space packages to make something boot at all. Um, obviously, that means that any kernels in those contrib sub-packages don't get uh, a terrible lot of love. And so you will not get um, security updates there. Um, maybe from time to time they might get updated, but only as far as um, the contributors uh, take care of that. Um, the um, SUSE and OpenSUSE um, kernel team does not maintain those. Um, in theory, depending on which kernel it is, so if it's like a Linux Next kernel that we've packaged there with additional patches, then that would be a system that you can easily just um, update to um, the latest kernel, whereas um, if it's, um, say, a 3.0 kernel, 3.4, 3.8, 3.10, whatever um, comes with um, certain Android flavors, then um, chances are that there will be disruptive changes if at some point uh, mainline um, support gets added for a particular um, board. So yeah, um, some packages simply there get uh, contributed and, and start a bit rot. Some, some help with that would be appreciated. And in some cases, like the Raspberry Pi, um, I've taken pity and um, seen to uh, getting them into the um, hardware repository or whatever other repositories those packages might live, um, as, in, like live in as a um, develop project. Um, if something is not quite working in the um, Tumbleweed kernel, in the official one, then there's always the uh, kernel head to check, at least uh, once we've uh, updated the kernel um, config so that it builds again. Should be for 64-bit, not yet for 32-bit. Uh, and in theory, there would also be a kernel Linux Next um, available um, for builds. Unfortunately, what we do not have for the Linux Next kernel at this point in time is uh, DTP packages. So uh, here's a quick graphic about how all those uh, kernel repositories relate. So um, let's see, do we have a mouse pointer over there? Uh, here it is, okay. So this is the um, kernel.org linux.git repository. Um, any new um, mainline development uh, get, goes into there through, through pull requests, obviously into Linux Next first as a staging or some particular maintainers a repository first. And at some point, once um, a kernel is released, then uh, maintenance releases will end up in the Linux stable Git repository. Um, at some point, together with the configs that sit in the um, OpenSUSE specific uh, kernel source um, .git repository, uh, we will end up with a, a git tree combined, also with some uh, patches of ours. Um, and that then ends up in the kernel head repository. It gets at some point submitted to kernel, kernel stable and then to um, OpenSUSE factory. And from there on, we inherit it into OpenSUSE factory arm. Now, what does this mean for the vendors? Um, it means that um, if you are manufacturing an ARM chip or an ARM board based um, on such a chip, then please don't just put um, um, your, your sources somewhere on GitHub or elsewhere in the internet. And that's not the way how we will get them into Tumbleweed. Um, kernel, um, patches need to be submitted to the mainline Linux kernel, kernel.org, the particular mailing lists. 
Um, and also, please understand that uh, we do not use the def config, so it's not sufficient just to um, enable things in the mainline kernels um, configs, but we are maintaining our own kernel configs and need to have um, not just the, uh, the particular SOC, but also all the um, peripheral drivers enabled in um, our own repository. And depending on whether you have your bootloader in flash storage or um, on, a, uh, on a medium such as an um, SD card, then we also need to deliver that particular bootloader to our users. So that means that we need to have that bootloader sources available in Tumbleweed as well. And the only way to get that done is to submit the enablement patches for your particular hardware into um, the respective upstream projects, such as the mainline U-Boot. And um, from there on, we can then inherit it with the next release version. I did mention UEFI um, a couple of times. Um, there is a talk in seven minutes um, about that particular topic that I'm referring to by Alexander Graf. And um, with that, I am moving on to the questions. I know that uh, I spoke very quickly to, uh, to fit all this into the talk. Um, do you have any questions about what I have said or any additions? Yeah. Do we have anyone that can provide a microphone to Andrew? Is there anywhere on the wiki for uh, sort of low-hanging fruit to get better enablement for some of these platforms um, where we know okay, there are certain corner cases that need fixing mm -hmm. on some of these platforms, but because of the vast number of platforms that you're trying to enable, you're just doing the the basic enablement, if you will, and mm -hmm. if somebody could help to tidy the mess up a little bit more, um, that would ensure that users can have a much smoother experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've moved on to, to the next slide, which uh, actually has a, an address into the wiki, and from there on, or through the category ARM devices, you can find um, all ARM boards that have actually been documented in our wiki. I usually try to at least start a page with the technical data and the initial kernel status, but uh, it's true that from time to time we forget to update it with the latest information. So. Um, I think we do not have a particular list of like low hanging fruits of, you know, like what um, change or package or something could be done by, say, a, a, um, a newbie to, to OpenSUSE. Um, but um, um, me and a few others have been involved in uh, working with the various upstream projects. Um, for instance, um, I have done the initial um, um, upstream kernel enablement for the M-Logic uh, GXBB, that's the uh, um, S905, and that was just, you know, very small changes to actually get, get that particular work done based on a, uh, um, a vendor's Git tree. So obviously if someone has a board and is um, motivated enough to do some work themselves, then obviously the old kernel code that most board vendors provide can be used as a base to get something working in mainline. Um, and uh, obviously there, there can be some, some help given in doing so, but it requires a bit of uh, courage and motivation. I, I believe for ARM64 it's slightly easier than for 32-bit for in particular if there was like a related 32-bit um, platform already available with something like a serial driver that then only needs, you know, like a bit of um, k-config changes um, or, you know, some special handling for, in my case, it was, you know, that some different clock frequency needed to, to be uh, taken care of. Um, it's uh, definitely something that uh, I always encourage people to, to help out with, yes. So on the one hand, it's um, um, a warning to people 
Um, this, what, I, what I've shown earlier in this talk, that um, certain things will not yet work out of the box, even if they're, you know, available for sale and, you know, reasonably priced. Um, but on the other hand, you could also see that as like a list of opportunities where you can actually actively contribute. Did that answer the question or did you? Yeah. Okay. Was there some question in that area there? Uh, pardon my ignorance, uh, talking about the, the Raspi, um, do we have, do you about, hear me? Yeah. About talking about what? The ra Raspberry. Oh, yes. um, do we have all the user land packages like the Python libraries for the sense head, that's the one I'm playing with at the moment, um, somewhere in, in the OpenSUSE repos or are they the parts where we would still have to do more work. So if, let's say, a student wants to go with our images instead of the Raspbian ones, they would mm -hmm. still like need extra extra repos or getting things packaged up first. Um, that's a good question. So obviously there are um, certain um, base packages, like obviously the kernel and uBoot that get uh, taken care of first in order to get into a, a shell at all. And if we're lucky, also into, you know, network and USB and, and whatnot. Um, but um, there was a post on the OpenSUSE-R mailing list, as, as seen here, um, about um, some uh, Python GPIO library um, on the one hand um, missing and when it was getting packaged, that it was not fully working. So uh, that is, that's actually a, a very good point. So um, in particular, when we are dealing with um, boards that did their own kernel, like the Raspberry Pi on you know, some, some older um, fork, um, then there is some divergence in how the drivers actually um, look like when they get into mainline, and apparently that was the case for the GPIO driver. Um, so apparently there is a different numbering, and also you know maybe locations and naming might might differ between the two. So on the one hand, um, it would be about um, those people that need a particular library um, to just. Um, um, read up on the Python um, packaging guidelines if you need to, and uh, just um, submit such packages to um, the uh, the build service. So there is like um, our well, rather small core OpenSUSE ARM team um, does not really go about and search the the web for available software packages that might be useful to um, some user out there, um, in particular if we don't really know how to to package them. So this is very much user driven, both the the hardware enablement for certain boards as well as the user space parts. Very quickly, is that IRC channel on Freenode? Um, uh, I believe so, yes. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. It should also be uh, linked, um, or at least written in the, uh, on, the, on the wiki, yes. If there are no further questions, then I conclude this talk and uh, invite Alex on for the next talk. Thank you very much. Okay.